Hello, everyone. Uh, welcome back to a special, special episode of uh, Shouting Into the Void because we are looking at the specials uh, overall. Um, we, we've obviously watched them individually. Uh, we've discussed each episode by itself, uh, which you can go back and have a look at. Um, but as with every series, we do a series review and the specials, although not a proper series, is class as its own separate series. I, I don't think it necessarily should be, but it is because money. Oh yeah, um, those people. Well, it's just it's just a, it's a strange bit, isn't it? It's basically series four point five. Yeah, it um, is odd. But you, never mind. That decision was made back in two thousand and nine, so there's nothing we can do <laughs> to change that anymore. Um, but yeah, so this is uh, I, I guess we're including it from the next Doctor, Planet of the Dead, Waters of Mars, uh, and the End of Time Part One and Part Two. Um, which again we have all reviewed separately, uh, but we'll we'll go over the whole series. Uh, we've got a few things we liked, a few things we didn't, and then we'll briefly touch on David Tennant's run overall. Um, and and we've got one thing we really liked from his three and a bit years or three and a bit series is of uh, of the show. Um, and then obviously one thing that we didn't necessarily like as well. Before we eventually move on to Matt Smith, which will be coming up next week. Um, so I'll let you begin. Uh, of the oh. specials of the uh, five episodes we had, uh, what is your highlight? Your your best positive? My best positive, I think it's only fair to say, Mr. David Tennant. Ah, oh, he's my second. Yes. Oh, awesome. Um, <laughs> but yeah, since he's bowing out until he's the fourteenth Doctor, um, you know, it's his swan song, his last little year of stuff, um, and you know. Even when the specials weren't at their strongest, looking at you, <laughs> Planet of the Dead, um, you know, he is like, as the actor playing the Doctor often is in stories that yeah. are quite not so good. Um, uh, he's kind of the glue that at least holds it together somewhat and you can enjoy um, some aspects of it. Um, so, yeah, he's, he's fantastic. Um, you know, say what you will about the Doctor as a character in his run and like what they do with him and his arc and all of that jazz, which I've already talked about at great length um, over the year and a bit we've been doing this. Um, I think it is safe to say David Tent has consistently been fantastic. Um, you know, the only other times he hasn't stood out is when the script hasn't given the Doctor much to do, um, which is kind of testament to how great he is. And, you know, the fact that he's such a huge fan of the show, he's still such a big face of it, even, you know, all these years later. Um, and even beforehand, because, you know, big finish and stuff that he did. So, um, yes. you know, the the fact that, you know, he has this deep care of the show and the character, I think it really did come through um, in his performances and the specials were no exception to that. You can see, you know, particularly in the end of time, obviously, because this is the last story, you know, he's really putting his all into it. Um, I nearly, I nearly <laughs> said the... Uh, <laughs> nearly said it. Nearly said it. Nearly said it. Nearly said it. David Tennessee in Tennessee. His whole Tennessee. Yeah. <laughs> oh, God. Um, <laughs> why? We went there anyway. Why? Um, but yeah, you can, you can see he's put his all into it. Um, and that is, you know, a consistent thing with the specials. And he's had to work with, you know, every episode, basically. He's had a different companion and a whole new set of characters to kind of have to work with, which I think is a lot in terms of, you know, Doctor Who is all about change and stuff. But it, it's very rare that you don't keep at least like a companion for a decent amount of time and then they move on and you keep a doctor for a certain amount of time and then you move on but the specials is a very unique thing in the fact that it just everyone feels very different and very unique in terms of who's in it and where they go um so the fact that we do have the consistency with David Tent's performance in there um is a huge thing to kind of hold all that together um you know he's had some very funny moments in there and particularly in the time, he also has some pretty dramatic and emotional moments, which he also mm -hmm. does very, very well. Um, so even if like the specials themselves, I think, you know, were kind of a mixed bag. Um, I'm I'm glad at least that they all gave him moments to shine in like his final year in the part. Um, yeah. So, yeah, he was, I think, easily the highlight of the specials for me. Yeah, I think that's fair. And I think that's sort of highlighted. And I think all of my positives from the specials featured david tennant in in some form in every episode shocking um i know but you know but there, there'll be times in, in his in his tenure where he's not been in the positives um and yeah i think once maybe he was in the negatives for i think that was more of a character thing that was but, um, um, most of the sidemen wasn't it ah uh, yeah maybe that might be it but either way 
uh he's definitely again you can tell it's his swan song you can tell he's giving his giving everything in this uh his, his whole his whole tendency into this um <laughs> and uh and uh yeah i i think he i think he's excellent um i think you can tell that he cares for the role and he and he basically understands the assignment with with what he's given um even when the script isn't as good and it needs him to do a little bit more work uh as seen sort of in planet of the dead um and then he also has the, the the gravitas that he might need for the emotional moments sort of in Waters of Mars and the end of time part two. Um, and yeah, I really think it shows his range across these sort of five episodes from from funny to depressing to angry, um, <laughs> which is always what you want when you're basically this is your audition reel for your next uh, your next however many roles yeah. in, in acting. Um, but yeah, I think he's great, and so that's why he's he's second on my list. Um, and we'll come to my first next. Um, but what is your second? My second is a very good question. Um, oh yeah, um, for me, I enjoyed about these specials is I think as a collective they were able to showcase like some of the best elements of the era as a whole, and I also think as a collective they were a really good celebration of this era. You know. Uh, the key thing, I guess, is the end of time with, you know, the whole saying goodbye to one of the companions and stuff like that. Um, and, you know, bringing Wolf back into the fray, bringing, you know, Donna back into the fray, be it in the background and stuff like that. Um, addressing, you know, events with, like, the Doctor not wanting to have a companion by the end of Planet of the Dead because he'd been mm-hmm. burnt too many times over it. Um, and you have, you know, like, the Cybermen in the next Doctor who are, you know, one of my favourite villains and you know, this era brought them back into Doctor Who. You know, David's first series brought them back. So it was kind of a cool, like, nod, nod to that. Um, the Time Lords and the Master coming back into it as well. Um, that feels very much, you know, the story with them, the Time Lords stuff feels very much tied to this era. So they kind of paid that off and wrapped that up and celebrated that. Um, and we've had some really good original villains in this era as well. And, you know, the Flood in the Waters of Mars are definitely a highlight. Um, not just in the specials, but you know the whole era as a whole. I think they were the coolest and scariest films. Um, so I really enjoyed that, and you know the emotions that we saw the Doctor go through as well. He's had a bit of a rough time, bless him. Um, you know, for better or worse, and the stuff he's had to go through and the things that have been thrown at him or sucked through portals away from him. In Rose's case, I suppose. Um, and yeah, I, I feel like grinding down the specials again for better or worse um does show the big highlights and you can tell they just wanted to have a bit of a laugh and just do what they wanted really you could you could see the control i think for the most part with this final kind of set of specials um and i I do think they gave us some you know returning villains they gave us some nice original ones they brought back basically all the core characters from this era um and rounded that off in a really nice, neat way. And I like that it's kind of, you know, the slow burn, like the he will knock four times thing anyway, which I did like the setup, but I like the payoff. So, um, you know, that is something sort of tying at least the last couple of specials together. Um, so, you know, you could you could feel like we do they do have this long term plan for what the specials are trying to do. And I think they achieved that and closed off the era in a, a emotionally satisfying way for sure. Um, which has often, I think, been the strength of how they wrapped up seasons in this era. Um, so, yeah, I, I think all the specials had a few elements. I'm like, oh, yeah, this, you know, this is like the best bits of what we've done. You know, they're very good emotional characters, emotional character moments like that. And I think basically every special at least had a scene that was kind of like that. Um, and some returning villains, returning characters and stuff. Just one last hurrah for them, should we never see them again. And for some of them, we haven't. Um, for most of those companions etc um so yeah I, I think it's a really great celebration of the era as a whole fair enough yours is slightly more um uh overarching than my my top one slash second one mm-hmm. uh because i think in the special specifically i like the time lord victorious subplot that that goes on a little bit um obviously it's 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 not necessarily prevalent in the first two um you could argue here and there that there are different things that maybe hint towards it happening um but then obviously from the end of waters of mars um through to sort of the reaction end of time i think is something that i wish was explored more but in what we get we'll get on to that (laughs) yeah i think i think for me it's it's what makes the special stand out is this 
lonely traveller that can do what he wants, which I think we don't we haven't seen before with with the tenth Doctor at least. Yeah. Um, and I think the specials provide sort of uh, an insight into that and why he shouldn't be doing that, um, and also what could happen when it does um, and how it all spirals and all things like that. Um, and yeah, as someone that enjoys when the Doctor goes, you know, angry. I, I I appreciated when that happened in this um, because it happened you know to the extreme that we hadn't seen before, and you needed something like that to justify sort of doing these extra episodes. I know that they it didn't really come into play until like late in the the waters of Mars sort of work through, but yeah. it it feels to me that that justifies having these four extra episodes because there is some more development there that yeah. could have been left. I was doing some yeah. um, research for like this because I was trying to get some like inspiration for like what, what I want to talk about um, and I saw a review of the specials that called it the David Tennant DLC which I thought that yeah. was such a great way of describing it so I think I mean, I it is and, and I think I think we, we, we did say that when um, with the end of Journey's End is like you know that feels like it could be the end of that feels like the end of the story there. doesn't it yeah that's where it should end and then so there needs to be something more to justify why he's got these extra adventures and i think you do see this you see the build up of i keep losing people i keep not being able to do what i want to do well screw it i'm actually finally going to do what i want to do uh, oh shit I, I, oh, no. I, 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 I fucked up straight away <laughs> i'm sorry uh, and it comes up now i know it all it does you know it's over a bit quick but when you know when you've only got sort of five episodes it can be quite tricky you know we see with flux now 10 years later you know that was quite tricky to tell a story in six in six parts um but maybe that's just because there was too much trying to do too much in that one um but either way i think the time of victorious aspect of the specials is definitely something that makes it stand out in its own unique way um and separates it from just being an extension of series four I think, which is why it kind of deserves its own little series title, but never mind, it's only five episodes, so I guess it doesn't count. Um, so what is your third positive? Uh, yes, the varying scales of like the threat and mm -hmm. also kind of the setting as well. Um, what I always actually quite get excited when they're like, oh, we're going to do a year of specials for Doctor Who. So I just think that gives them I don't know more of a chance to make something of each individual one and like really make them unique and stand out and i think that is something that, you know these specials very much did i kind of get that vibe from the first part of series seven as well like each one feels very different like this first five before we yeah. know where we leave um and in a way we get that with the specials this year as well so there's a bit of difference to them um, we obviously don't know for sure how different they're going to be because we haven't seen the last one yet. Um, but I always just, I like the concept of Doctor Who just having like a year of specials. Um, I know some people will just moan like, oh, I want a full series every year. Like, we don't live in that world anymore. Get over it. Um, yeah. You know, something's better than nothing. And I, I've always enjoyed that aspect of it anyway. I think it's quite a neat thing to do. Um, and I, I think we kind of very much got that with this. You know, these are kind of the templates for doing a year of specials like this. Um and apparently it's a sign of Doctor Who failing when it's a woman who has a year of specials, but, you know, yeah, it's fine. It um, but, yeah, I, I just, like, you know, maybe not in terms of, like, a lot of them are just, like, set on Earth or earth base for the most part, much like Series 1 was. But, um, you know, we do have a few glimpses of different planets, like in Planet of the Dead. Um, we do have, like, a Victorian-based story in the past with the next Doctor. What was a Mars? Set on Mars. Um and then, you know, that's like the real kind of emotional turning point for the Tenth Doctor's arc in the specials as well. So that's a very character driven one, as is the end of time. But then that kind of, you know, brings three years of plots almost without the time war and everything to a conclusion. Um, so that's like this huge epic scale. Um, whereas Waters of Mars feels like a very personal story, very kind of claustrophobic, base under siege kind of deal. Um, so, you know, maybe all the episodes aren't like, absolute bangers 10 out of 10 but they do all offer something different um so it can be like a small scale threat um or you know gather for us back and it's going to yeah. destroy the earth and everything like that um and i like that there was a bit of variation to that and the stakes can always be high but for different reasons and sometimes the stakes are just more personally high than like it's the end of the world because you know you don't want to do that every single week um because then like well they always just deal with it it's fine um, and I feel like the specials really succeeded in, you know, the emotional weight of that. 
And I think the end of time also succeeds very much in the personal and the like universal stakes being pretty damn high. Um, so that's a kind of good end point for the specials um, when we've had like lots of people in jeopardy or, you know, personal jeopardy as well. And then it kind of all climaxes in the end of time when everything's going horribly wrong. Um, and, you know, it means like the end of the Tenth Doctor as well. Um, so I, I really just like looking at the specials as a whole, I, I, I really grew to appreciate and revisiting them this time. Um, that, you know, I may not have enjoyed some of the plot lines, or I may not have enjoyed all of the side characters or this and that. Um, I did like that there was a unique distinguishing factor between all of them, which I think is what makes having the year specials really, really fun. Um, and yeah, I, I think that was a really cool thing that they managed to pull off um, and, and make the scales of it um, and the stakes of it very meaningful even if, you know, some were higher than others. I, I think that's pretty difficult to do. So I appreciated that. Yeah, I think that's fair enough. Uh, and that kind of leads on to my third positive as well, which is overall the the villains of, of the episodes. Right. Um, you know, the, the Cybermen in The Next Doctor and the Cyber Shades uh, and the Cyber King, Cyber Lord, yeah. whatever it's called. Cyber King, yeah. Um, you know, I think those are the, both the Shades and the King are just good additions to the sort of the, the the cyber army i guess um and i enjoyed the sort of the twists they were on on different things um maybe not planet of the dead although we did say you know we like the concept of of the swarm in planet of the dead and i think that was a good idea just maybe not executed as well as it could have been mm-hmm. um and then obviously what was a mars the 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 water parasite whatever it is in in the ice um i think that's that was a, obviously a very creepy horrifying terrifying um monster to have uh, and i think that's done really well and then obviously the master in the end of time part one i'm a big fan of and then rassilon and the time lords in the end of part two i think are also a highlight of of the series um so it's a fairly strong villain list uh for this um which i think is sort of representative of David Tennant's run as a whole, and probably Russell's run as a whole, we you know most most of the time the villains are at least interesting or well designed, um, rather than anything else. Uh, and I think you can see that through this. And then when it's a returning villain, they're developed a bit. They're given something new, whether that's a Cyber Shade, whether that's a, a bluey skeleton boy. You know, they're 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 changed a little bit so that it's not just the same thing coming back. Um, and I appreciate that, and I think that it's it makes you want to go and watch the next episode because you're like, oh, that looks interesting. I'm going to go watch it, and then once you have seen it, it's like, hey, they were cool. I'm going to rewatch it again because I enjoyed what they did with them. Uh, and I think the specials really does showcase a lot of that, uh, and a lot of how good writing uh, can sometimes let down good villains, <laughs> uh, especially in Planet of the Dead's case, um, unfortunately. Um, but yeah, I think that's that's it for my sort of positives. Have you got any other additional ones you want to mention? Um, Wilf, as always. Mm-hmm. Just, I just love that man. I would die for that man. Um, mm-hmm. And Bernard Quims didn't die since our last recording when we were scared. So. Nope. At least, uh, I mean, they haven't announced it if he did. So. Touch, touch wood, touch wood. Um, yeah, touch wood. Touch wood. Um, I might be doing it now. But yeah, <laughs> he's dying right now. Um, yeah. But yeah, I just, you know, what a amazing choice to bring him in for the end of time, you know. Um, amazing performance by Bernard and yeah I, I've already talked at length about the Doctor and Will's relationship in the end of time and that's a big highlight overall um, but yeah he was definitely a big standout too. Yeah that's fair enough. Um, negatives for the specials uh, yes. let's discuss those now uh, what is your first one? Yes um, for the most part uh, the side characters. I yeah I, I feel that. That will lead into my third one. I've got wasted characters from right, okay, yeah. I think, uh, uh, yeah, yeah. I think, with the exception of the Waters of Mars crew, which I actually quite enjoy most of them. Again, not all of them get that much to do. They just kind of just stand there. Um, I do like them enough as characters, um, even though they're all basically there to die for the most part. Um, but yeah, the next Doctor, I like Jackson. Um, I like Rosita. Um, Miss Hartigan. Miss Hartigan, so yeah, your favourite villain. Yeah, great. Mercy. Um, God. Um, so yes, there, there's her. Um, 
and all the children and all the, the I guess, you know, children's all masters the, or whatever. All, all, get all taken the king's over. horses and all the king's men. Yeah. Couldn't put Humpty together again. Yeah. Um, so, you know, not huge standouts beyond that. Mm-hmm. Um, so, I guess fine, but it's a shame that one of them's kind of the villain. It's a bit like kind of annoying. Mm-hmm. Um, and then we come to Planet of the Dead where. You know, outside of that one really nice scene where we talk about what they're planning to do when they get home, um, none of them have any character outside of that. We've already talked a great length about psychic woman for psychic reasons for, you know, whatever. Um, and, you know, I, I'm not a huge fan of Christina personally. I, I, I just, I don't know. She never quite gelled a Doctor Who for me. Um, love the tribal boys, though. But, um, yeah, and then, you know, unit, they're just kind of there to be unit people, really. Um, I do like Malcolm. But yeah, stingrays and then okay. Um, then what the Mars actually do really, really enjoy? And then again, we spoke in a great length during the end of time part one and two reviews about the Vinvochi and the Naismiths. Um, and they're just they really kind of bog down that two part massively, I think. Um, particularly part one because that's when they actually do have screen time um, with the Naismiths anyway. Um, so yeah, I, I just feel like trimming the fat on these specials would have been you know, very, very beneficial. Um, and maybe if they'd had more time to, you know, be a bit more savage with what they got rid of or mm-hmm. just give them actual characters for most of the side people, um, you know, I think it really would have stood out well because the Waters of Mars would not work if you didn't give a shit about that crew of people. Um, mm-hmm. But I think they achieved that fairly quickly. Um, and you know that makes Adelaide, Adelaide's sacrifice at the end all the more like powerful and meaningful and stuff. Not just for what it means for the Doctor, but you're also like, oh, that's kind of a shame. You know, she she seemed quite a good character, um, and I just don't think you get that for most of the other specials. Um, and if we did have that with those characters, um, you know, I've already talked about how good the stakes were. But imagine like the personal stakes of each individual episode if you really really cared about all the people involved, um, which we don't get sadly. Um, so. I do feel like most of the side characters for me with the specials were kind of a bit of a mm, fine bye. Yeah. yeah, I think that's fair. And I think when you compare these specials with with Flux again, I think that's where sort of COVID restrictions probably helped a bit. It they sort of helped to refine how many characters they could have. So there's very few in there that are seemingly just thrown in there for thrown in their sake. Yeah. Um I think the only one the only ones you could really argue is Kate Stewart and the the, the great serpent are probably the only ones that probably don't need to be there but if if they're all connected with like the the centenary special maybe kate stewart had a bigger role in the upcoming episode so therefore they're like let's put her in there anyway who knows yeah but you know at least with flux you've got a core set of characters and they focus on them and even the ones that come in that they're, they're done pretty well whereas eustatius jericho the best man. exactly that's the one i'm thinking of and you know if you cut down what a man you know if you cut on the bus, if you cut it down to maybe two or three passengers, you could have them being a bit more. You could explore them a yeah. bit more. Most of them just sit on the bus and cry. Uh, <laughs> at least two of them do that. Yeah, uh, I mean, mood, but... In the TV yeah, show. I mean, yeah, same. Uh, and then even in, you know, uh, Next Doctor, the core characters are, are fine there. I don't think there's necessarily... Anyone, they, that is kept to a relatively small group of core characters. The others are obviously just effectively cannon fodder, which is fine. Yeah. Um, the base crew, I think, while I do like them, I do think that they could have done with a little bit more development. Mm-hmm. So maybe if you just take out one or two, you could then help the other ones. But it's not a big deal because I still think they're fine as they are. And then, as you mentioned, yeah, the, the Vin Vinvochi and the Naismiths and to some extent, Sylvia, Donna and Donna's husband yeah, in the end of time aren't like, you know, they're in there, but they're not given much. There's story reasons why Donna's not given much, obviously. but it does feel like they have to be if we'll say they have to be there we'll solve people friends or another one where it's like they're there yes. for the start and then they go yeah um so they're just there's just maybe it's a, a bloated cast list that could have been trimmed down um you know there's something there the the police detective in planet of the dead you, yeah he's he's there at the start and they're at the end and then that's it i think that they could have just there could have been a lot more done with them if there was more time and then that means if you cut some of them out, there's more time to, you know, we've discussed it at length previously, but yeah, yeah, it's just, unfortunately, there are some characters in here which just aren't, aren't used to their, to their potential, I don't think. Yeah. Um, but 
never mind. They're, they're there. It's just the episode came out twelve years ago, so we can't really do much about it now. So no, <laughs> we can just shout angrily. And yet people still moon about it. All these years later, it's oh, what we do. Never mind. Uh, so, what is your second negative for the special? Uh, my second negative uh, is the, in particular, I'm being specific here. Um, for the most part, the villain plots, their mm. schemes. Um, because I do like the villains that we got for the most part, apart from the stingrays. Um, and we know how I felt about the master in End of Time Part One. Um, yep. best to leave that there. Um, but yeah, I, I I do feel like a lot of the like big threats kind of do fall flat. Um, you know, I mean, with Miss Hartigan and the Cybermen, I I love me the Cybermen. We know this. Um, but yeah, the whole like Cyber King thing, you know it doesn't feel like it really goes anywhere and they don't really address that people do remember it they're just like oh yeah funny that at the end and then obviously yeah. they then clear that up in series five because of the crack in time and everything um because then they put it back in the box like russell probably would have done if he'd had more time to put it back in the box but their sympathy was not to time um so you know that's fine but it's not the strongest cyberman plot really they didn't really think yeah. it through um they're a bit stupid trying to you know upgrade her of all people but there you go um stingrays sure why not um you know that is I, I, they don't even seem to have a plan they're just there just you know doing what's natural to them to do you know it's not like yeah. they're necessarily villains um that's just how they live um but i don't think that's an interesting thing for a doctor who monster alien whatever to be doing um particularly when that is like the threat of it. It's not like something that's just a bit of a nuisance or whatever, like a set piece to, you know, saw the TARDIS through at the start for an exciting opening or whatever. Um, so that wasn't great. Um, I do like, obviously, uh, Waters of Mars. It's like one of the best episodes of the era. So um, cannot fault that really. Um, and then, yeah, not a big fan of the thing with the master and all his nonsense. Um, and it gets kind of a bit undermined anyway, but the time was coming in and the time was, you know, they have this big plot and the doctor just shoots a machine and that's that anyway. Um, so, you know, it doesn't necessarily come down too much at the end of the day. Um, so while I think the villains themselves, you know, have some really strong moments for the most part in the specials, um, I wasn't necessarily huge fans of what the stories were doing with them per se. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's fair enough. Um, and yeah, I, I do agree with some of them, you know, that they're not that well explored. You know, and it, again, it comes back to the whole if you cut out a couple of those unnecessary characters, you could have more time exploring these things. But I don't know, maybe that maybe they have to fill an actor quota where they have to have a certain number of people in the show every episode for a uh, and get made. hindsight is 2020, I suppose. Yeah, yeah, Sorry and when you, don't, when you don't have to, you know, write the episode in a week, uh, you yeah. probably, you know, get a bit more when you're not time. up at 4 a.m. writing chain smoking, you know, rewriting. <laughs> Yeah. an episode like Moffat was doing. Oh God, yeah, but uh, never mind. Uh, Showrunner, not an easy job. <laughs> oh, no, definitely not, especially during a pandemic. Yeah. Oh, oh Jesus. Jesus. Sorry, General. Never mind. I get so much shit. <laughs> uh, so my sort of next negative, uh, and I think it's kind of unfair one, but what can you do? Uh, the CGI, I think, throughout okay. the specials mainly, yeah, isn't helped by the introduction of HD. From planet of the dead uh almost. no that's an unfortunate um, one to have to start with really isn't it yes with the bus. Uh, even you know the the cyber king in the next doctor is it, passable but it's not great it's definitely going to age even worse than it already has in the future uh the flying bus in planet of the dead is the key one that's pretty pretty terrible the yeah. the the stingrays are fine they're passable but you know they're not great again the introduction of hd didn't help that one no. wars of mars is pretty much fine because most of that is practical effects except maybe a couple of the establishing shots but even then they're not they're, they're pretty decent mm -hmm. uh the sort of the main one in the end of time is the the vinvochi ship in the second one i think is a bit just a bit video game-esque especially when it's flying yeah. in and stuff um and you know i i know this it obviously came out you know 12 13 years ago so they're not going to have aged well but avatar came out 10 years ago you know revenge of the sith came out in 2005 yeah. and that opening sequence i know there's budget differences and all that kind of thing but that opening sequence from 2005 has held up more than most of doctor who since you know 2021 <laughs> <laughs> you, know, you know even it's probably better than some cgi we saw in flux um 
so you know it's all about who you get and, ha- and, and how much money you're spending on it but I don't think it necessarily helps and it, it also doesn't help play into the into the sort of theory that Doctor Who's just a you know a cheap kids show that doesn't take itself seriously and sometimes when you see dodgy props or or you know dodgy CGI or a character lifting a big beam off of them but it's actually wobbling as they try and lift it off looking at you Clara into journey of the center of the town <laughs> it's we'll come to you later um, uh, but yeah uh, I, I just think the CGI is it's a bit you know it's a bit dated it's a bit wobbly yeah. and we always say the practical effects are always much better used in this show than uh, anything else but yeah I think that's an interesting point to bring up as well because just this week they confirmed that the mill are doing the effects again for RTD2. So I'm I'm looking forward to seeing like how much that studio's kind of come along in like twelve ish years and see what they can do now. I, I can only assume if they're still in business now, they've they they're with the times. I would hope not, so. <laughs> they're not gonna be producing the same It level would be so of, funny. You know. And you know, technology at the time, especially in that you know, back in two thousand and five it did limit what they could do because it was all new and all the you know, whatever. So hopefully they will have improved but you know if they just want to make it practical effects the whole time go for it i'm i'm there for it yeah but uh, who knows uh so what is your last negative <laughs> last <laughs> it is my last negative um yeah i like the time of victoria's arc mm-hmm. i do think it was wasted it's kind of my last mm-hmm. one i think i think it's such a shame it's such a really neat idea uh, just beyond waters of mars just doesn't get explored and you could kind of go from Planet of the Dead to the end of time, and your Doctor really hasn't visibly changed, um, you know, until you get uh, to him speaking. He's got Gold. a cowboy hat. Thank you very much. <laughs> I'll have you know. And a Hawaiian lay. So yeah, cultural appropriation. Um, <laughs> uh, but yeah, uh, I, I think that's a shame, and maybe they just didn't know the impact that that particular plot thread was gonna have. Um, Maybe End of Time was finished before Waters of Mars was. I doubt it. Um, sorry, Russell. But um, yeah, I, I, I think it is one of the most interesting things that they did with the Tenth Doctor, in my opinion. And the fact that, you know, it took T-shirts and books and audio plays Comics. 10 years later to actually explore that. Theater. Yeah, is a bit of a shame. Um and yeah, especially when the end of time, you know, two hours long, so much could have been cut out of it, mm. boring naysmiths, et cetera. I feel like they, there was a room to do more with it. It just wasn't done, which was a shame. Um, so, yeah, it is, I think, one of the most interesting aspects of the specials um, and of the Ten of Doctors, like, arc. Um, so, you know, it's kind of a shame that really you only ever get it in the Wars of Mars, and that's about it, um, particularly when it's only the last 10 minutes of the Wars of Mars as well. Um, but, you know... I guess they just don't want the Doctor being that dark on screen for too long because no. he's a hero, apparently. Um, maybe it's that, but yeah, it, I think it's a shame that we couldn't see more of that on screen in the specials. Yeah, I think that's fair. Um, and yeah, although it is my, as I mentioned in my positive, you know, it is, I really like it and I really enjoy it. And I think it's the one of the best bits of the specials. I do want to see more of it and i think it is it was something that russell threw in sort of very late into the development of waters and yeah. mars so yeah. it probably wasn't as thought out as it could have been but what can you do uh my third negative and this is going to be very harsh uh mm. my third negative is planet of the dead oh no that's fair <laughs> <laughs> uh, the whole episode is just unnecessary uh it it doesn't add anything. The only thing of consequence it has is the lady at the end saying he'll knock down, he'll knock four times or whatever. You could remove that and attach that to the end of the next Doctor or even Waters of Mars and that be it. You don't need this one in the middle. Um, I think it's good that we've got an extra episode fine. You know, I can, I can watch it and it's fine to watch, but it just... It feels like it takes up resources from other episodes. And we know that's the case when they went to Dubai for this one and they were supposed to go to Dubai for the end of time. All that other stuff, you know, what could have been done on this, the money spent, all the things that were on this one could have gone to the other episodes, uh, maybe to provide a bit more for the end of time or whatever. But yeah, I just don't think 
it was necessary and it's funny because the waters of mars was supposedly the extra episode that we got yeah uh, in this and not planet of the dead so the planned yeah. one was bad and the spontaneous one <laughs> was good um which is ironic but yeah i just think the planet of the dead is just unnecessary if i look at this list of specials that's the one i'm watching last yeah um i mean i know it's five episodes and and for me three of them are pretty top tier but of all you know if we look at the whole of series four included it's still going to be probably the last one i rewatch. Mm-hmm. um sorry but it's just you know the only one the only thing of interest in there is the doctor you know even the companion isn't that interesting they they don't have as long they don't stay around so you don't need to watch them to be like oh where did they come from where did their story start you know all the background characters have nothing in them um units there fine but they don't really do much except shoot some some stingrays out of the sky at the end if you're a lee evans fan sure he's there if, if you want that um but then he then he you know retired so that might say <laughs> might say something about this um but yeah i i just think it's just an, an unnecessary episode um and yeah if if i was to remove anything from the specials it would be that one and, and yeah. redistribute redistribute the wealth so to speak mm-hmm. uh sorry planet of the dead i know you tried um but you didn't yeah. try hard enough yeah. yeah never mind um have you got any other sort of negative points you want to hit on I mean, I'm kind of with you on Planet of the Dead, to be honest. Uh, yeah. I hadn't really thought about just putting an episode as a negative. I know. I thought it was going to be very a, harsh. But... It's a bold move, and I, I appreciate it. I think that's that's fair. Yeah, that's um, fair. I could have just put my positive, which would just be end of time, waters of Mars. Yeah, the three. But yeah, that's going to be our series reviews going on now. That's going it. forward, it's just going to be, crazy. instead of positive and negative, it's just going to be episodes we like, episodes we don't. Um, yes, exactly. Uh, but yeah, I, I I think that's kind of fair. And you know, I've I've gone on about things I haven't liked tonight specifically about specials in those previous installments. So go and check those out to watch me yes. know. Yeah, they're they're all on the channel, so you can look at our deep dives of our thoughts um in there. Um at this point I'd normally ask you what you think your your favorite episode was compared to what it really is, but I think for <laughs> both of us it's probably Waters of Mars, uh, in both aspects. Yeah. So I think I'll save everyone the pain of, <laughs> of us discussing that because as we have discussed previously, I think the Waters of Mars is definitely probably the you know the best of this the specials. It's one of the best of, of the show. Mm-hmm. Um and when you watch it, you you clearly see why. Um and yeah, I mean I don't don't have anything more to say other than what we have said previously on it, unless you want to touch on anything you you love about it. <laughs> no. Um no. I mean we know my feelings on the Waters of Mars and yeah, I mean, I've only given two episodes thus far, ten out of ten, when we've been doing this, and that's one of them. So, yeah, that's pretty, smart. pretty bloody good, I would say. I um, and I'm, I'm yet to give a ten, I think. Yes, and so, you never will. <laughs> apparently not. No. I mean, if Boomtown doesn't get a ten, nothing will. So. Oh, I know. You know. Who knows? Maybe I'm going to throw fine. a curveball in, and Pandora opens is going to hit you with a ten. Could do. I, mean, I do really like that one. It's so. pretty close to me as well, to be fair. Yeah. I love that story. So um, I guess we'll see. But yeah. Uh, absolutely. So gonna. before before we hit on to series five, um, we will have a very brief discussion of David Tennant's run uh, overall. Uh, we've we've picked out a, a positive for his run, a negative his run, uh, and just we'll go through them. Uh, so sort of my first one, which I'm going to get in now, just in case you steal it. Uh, is the original monsters and villains uh, right. we see throughout the uh, two to the specials. Um, a few include the Ood, the Weeping Angels, the Vashti Narada, um, the water creatures we have in this one. Uh, the Sycorax are also in there, you know, the the, the Ragnos. Uh, <laughs> you know, the, the, <laughs> sure. we, you know, you there have are been definitely... <laughs> Yeah, uh, the, fam- the, the family of blood um the living son uh the lazarus creature no. <laughs> uh the the the, the I- isolus from fear her the absorber <laughs> off uh no 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 uh forget the slabs <laughs> you can forget oh, the slab yeah yeah the slabs and the slab after the after love monsters that is a monster uh <laughs> um but yes uh, i i think there are a lot of really good original monsters uh in david Tent's run um again you know the crillitanes the the clockwork people you know there's there's loads um yeah you can go on. and some of them don't have the best stories uh you know some could have been done better but i think at the very least all of them are interesting most of them are interesting 
Uh, I think the only one that you could argue is boring is probably the Isolus from Fear Her. Yeah, probably. You know, I think you can you can argue for the other things, whether that's the uh, the wire in um, Idiot's Lantern. You know, at least there's something interesting there. It's like it's campy at least, rather than just ah, oh, draw me friends. You know, it's a bit. <laughs> <laughs> I'm lonely. Yeah, you know, and we're all I, lonely. Right? Uh, <laughs> you fool. Um, so yeah, I think that you know there there are a number of really good um, original monsters in this, uh, and obviously that there are in in every series uh, with every Doctor. Um, but I think looking back on it, this does stand out as some of the sort of the the icons I think of New Who originate from these past few series. Is um, part of that plays in because this is probably the popular it's been since it's come back. So obviously those are going to be the things that, that stand out and last. Yeah. Um, but, I, but, you know, a lot of them, a lot of them originated here and continue now, you know, with, with the Weeping Angels appearing in flux and all that jazz. So yeah, I, I think they're just, they're excellent all, 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 all throughout, um, you know, bar one or two. Um, and then an honorable mention as well to the sort of returning monsters and villains that are also updated and done very well in this, whether that's the side men or, the master or the Santarans, you know, they're all they're all done great, and I, I really I really like all of them. I just, I just like them all a lot. Um, but yeah, so what's your sort of uh, uh, David Tennant's whole run? What is your positive? Uh, I've decided to be a soppy old fool, um, and I've just put the nostalgia is my oh. my oh. big takeaway from this. Yeah, because I've enjoyed revisiting these because um, I haven't watched them in quite some time. Um, and yeah, it, I mean, a lot of people are nostalgic for this era, um, mm-hmm. for better or worse, in some Twitter users' cases. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I I do have you know so so many fond memories of like just waiting on Saturday for the time to just yeah. soar away until Doctor Who's on. Um, you know, my parents having friends over on Saturday nights, and I'm like, how dare you play Yahtzee in the corner? I'm trying to watch <laughs> Doctor Who here. Um, you be quiet. What are you doing? I don't care. Lazarus is just falling from the cathedral tower. Can you stop? <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Um, and yeah, is it my favourite era of Doctor Who? No. But, um, you know, you never forget your first. <laughs> <laughs> you never well, forget your first era of Doctor wrong. Who. Yeah. Um, and uh, yeah, you know, so, so many people have such fond memories of this era because, you know, it is the era with like, one of the most popular doctors and you know they brought the sidemen back for the first time they brought the master back for the first time he brought some times back for the first time davros back for the first time um all these companions returning kind of setting precedent for companions returning which just didn't happen in the classic series really um so you know it, it's hard for any future eras of the show to ever reach those highs because they've already been accomplished and it's already happened for the first time already so you know that's going to be a big reason people look so fondly at it and also you know people who are so fond of this era with a perfect age to be Doctor Who fans when this was airing. So of course you're going to love it then, you're going to love it now. Um, cause it kind of, you know, it manages to sear itself onto your heart in that way. Um, because it's just, yeah, like nine, ten years old, I think is like the ideal age to have Doctor Who. So we were quite fortunate really to be that age when it came back because, you know, just, yeah, grabbed our attention quite fully um, and just runs with it. Um, and, you know, I, I think, you know, for the most part, I think nostalgia is very well deserved having revisited it all now Um, because they do so much of it right and it is kind of such an achievement to bring a show that was like cancelled and you know was the laughing stock of the BBC um, for years and years and you know in the interim years people just thought adopted that silly cheap bad show um, and actually forgets that it can be very good as it turns out Um, and I think you know they showed that when they brought it back with Chris um, and even more so you know once David kind of took over and he became one of the most popular doctors by ever um so yeah it's just that very unique feeling of hearing that theme tune from this era particularly the series four one absolute fucking banger um and all of that it just brings back all those memories of you know walking into the exhibitions in cardiff and you hear that theme tune blasting or you hear it playing at the toys r us display stand um all of that just warms my cold cold dead heart um so yeah it's a very kind of special period of time i think for anyone who was kind of that age when it was airing or even if not you know people always super enjoy it um no matter what age because it's good um but for me you know it, it does kind of bring me back to 
times when you didn't have to worry about bills and life yeah. and rent jobs and rent Work. and shit yeah. and depression yeah. and, <laughs> and living anxiety and, oh, and everything. The war in Ukraine. Boris Johnson. Oh. I was like, who the yeah. fuck is Boris Johnson? I didn't know who that was. I didn't know who Donald Trump was. It was just such a wonderful period to be alive um, and to not have to pay for things. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, fond memories of running into Toys R Us and they had the Cassandra and Chip two pack that I've been looking <laughs> for for ages, and we took the they bus had, way into they had to have Cassandra it. Cassandra frame, yay! <laughs> yeah. They had destroyed Cassandra finally, um, <laughs> and yeah, just those little feelings that, of course, you're gonna love because you're a kid and you get the toys and stuff. I saved a Jodie Whittaker Tyler's team of figures <laughs> yeah. behind me, um, but you know what I mean. The times when I actually would take them home and play with them, I have not. Yeah. I've not played with Jodie Whittaker. I promise. Um, not yet. Um, but, um, <laughs> not what I'm yet. doing tonight. <laughs> <laughs> but now I've got the idea in my head now. So I'm going to make an animated short. Um, if I'm really bored on a Friday night, maybe that's what I'll do eventually. Yeah. But um, yeah, it's just a very special kind of period of time. And I think rightfully so with this era. Um, you know, there's there's a lot of fondness there. Um, and I do think, for, you know, it's very well deserved for the most part. So that's my favourite thing, like looking back on the David Tennant years, um, you know, I haven't enjoyed everything about some episodes or, you know, the main characters as a whole or where some of the plot lines have gone. Um, but you can't argue that they certainly got more right than they didn't. Yeah, yeah, I think that's fair. And I think, you know, it is, is something that leaves a lasting impression on a lot of people, um, even people that didn't wouldn't necessarily have watched the show or at least admitted to watching the show at the time will now mm-hmm. say oh yeah i watched that well you know because it's cool to like this thing yeah. now whereas back then it wasn't as in demand as it is now um and i think you know being adults you kind of it not necessarily the show loses its shine but you can see the cracks more than you could when you were younger yeah. Yeah. and the nostalgia does to some extent help paper over some of that definitely whereas, yeah. you know looking at at, at Jody's run and flux and everything you're like oh wow that script keeps doing this and that and this and that whereas a kid you're like yay yeah. run you know uh because at, at its heart this show is for kids and for families it's not for hardcore sci-fi fans you know that's that's your star trek that's you know, yeah you know, that's the way you want it. if you want your real sci-fi you go to shows like star trek and picard and all that you know, yeah. even Star Wars to some extent is for kids and families. You look at Jar Jar Binks, you look at Porgs, you look at Grogu, and they're all f- to appeal to younger audiences. Um, yeah. But and uh, when this came out, we were the perfect age, um, and we it, to to the extent of we grew up with it, and therefore it's now just seared into souls, and we're connected. Because yes. like everything, so, I, everything I see on Twitter now of like. You know, people that filming their kids watching Doctor Who nowadays and stuff, they are just as into like the Jodie Whittaker era and everything mm. as we were into, you know, Chris, David, um, when we were that age. Um, so it, it really is like a matter of age, I think, as you kind of grow up and people, you know, who are watching it now and they're like nine, ten years old, you know, when they do shouting into the voice 2.0 on their YouTube channels in 20 mm. years, um, you yeah. know, this YouTube is... YouTube will this still is, be around in 20 years, I'm sure. Yeah, definitely. Um <laughs> there's certainly a lot more fucking adverts on it but um <laughs> yeah they're going to be talking about you know this currently airing era like we can talk about this Russell T Davies era um which I think is very wholesome because everyone mm. you know every era of Doctor Who is someone's favorite and I don't think you can say that for most shows I, I think that's something very yeah. unique to Doctor Who um and something it does so so well because while it is mainly you know appealing for kids and i think they are the ones who will have their imaginations mostly captured from it because they don't know about camera angles or character arc and stuff like that they can just sit and have a laugh for 45 minutes every week um yeah it it can be special to them and it was very special to us then as it still is to me now you know i still enjoy mm-hmm. doctor now oh yeah as much as ever um but yeah the, that slice of time just that reminder of being a kid i think was very very wholesome to re-experience with all of this yeah, and Russell's definitely going to bring it back and it'll be exactly the same as when it he left. It will be exactly the same. Yeah. Exactly the same. Nothing will change. It won't be woke anymore. Yeah. To be fair, like, even if it, if they do tackle it exactly the same way and it is basically like they're just continuing on, 
because we're older now and people who are older now who watched it back then they're gonna be like this is completely different to my doctor yeah. who and i'm like no it's literally yeah. exactly the same it's always been the same it's like that it's that meme of the of the astronauts pointing uh, with the <laughs> always guns. has been yeah yeah <laughs> it was wait a minute it was always woke always has been <laughs> wait doctor who's show. always That's been political oh yeah. god but um but yes, that is it. That rounds off uh, David Tennant's uh, first run in Doctor Who, uh, because of course he's back as a 14th Doctor. No, no, not <laughs> I don't think so. Um, but we will obviously have David Tennant return uh, in Day of the Doctor when we get to that in, in you know, a, quite a few months' time. Um, but next week, that does mean we are entering Series 5 with Matt Smith, with Karen Gillan, uh, with Arthur Darville and with Stephen Moffat as the showrunner. Mm-hmm. Um, next next week is uh, the eleventh hour. Uh, we sort of discuss what we expect from that last week with the end of time part two. Uh, I think it's safe to say that we're both looking forward to revisiting uh, Oscar winner Olivia Colman's performance. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> um, uh, as well as uh, shout, shouty do- shouty dog man. Um, I'm sure he will be just as good. Oh, yeah. uh, <laughs> don't forget he's in it. Um, but yes, uh, that will be next week uh, where we finally dive into series five. And yeah, I I think we're both very excited for it. I think it's safe to say. Yes, I'm looking forward yes. to uh, rewatching my favourite Doctor again after a little oh, bit. So it has, awesome. it has been a while since I've seen seen any of Matt Smith, so I, I'm very excited to to dive in. Um, but that will be it for now. Uh, I imagine we'll be back uh, before then with some kind of discussion video of some sort. Not decided what it will be yet. Could be that they announced the Doctor. 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 Yeah, it, it could be. It could be they do it. It does it, seem like they are up. filming Doctor Who right now. So yes, it would they, surprise they me if it's someone. Seen. Hopefully, people unless that been, unless know, that fob watch theory is correct. Yeah. People have been getting like letters in like the neighborhood, haven't they? Saying like yeah. bad wolves filming, filming here, uh, and yeah. people have been saying like on set people have been telling them that it is Doctor Who so yeah exciting so, obviously they could just be filming like the villain side of the first episode yeah and we have to still cast everything it else who knows yeah it's it gonna might be a completely uh, trailer it's gonna be a Doctor Light uh Doctor Light series uh no Doctor <laughs> in Doctor Who yeah the Doctor's not in it until the last episode of the series <laughs> oh what a twist that would have been that happened oh no Liam's gone Oh, will he ever return? Mm-hmm. Oh, Liam's back. Okay. <laughs> Sorry, I think that's the sign. I think that's the sign we should leave it there. Um, we will leave it there and we will uh, be back in the week. Next week, we will be back. Goodbye. Bye.